light number one, light number two. So about a month ago, I made a video where I asked you guys whether or not I should shoot with Canon or Sony. And I read through all of the comments and I decided that in 2022, the camera of the year is going to be the Sony ZV-1. Now, budget didn't allow for me to invest in the Sony a7 III, so we're just gonna have to make do with this little guy. Just kidding. Jokes aside, I could have bought the Sony a7 III, but I actually think that the Sony ZV-1 is gonna be the best vlogging camera for me in 2022. Let me explain why. So with my decision of becoming a full-time YouTube content creator, I wanted to incorporate more of my everyday life and my surroundings into this channel. I don't wanna be just stuck at a desk talking about cameras well, ironically what I'm doing right now, but you get the drift. I wanna include more of my life. But the truth is, I really don't want to take along this massive YouTube setup of having the Gorilla Pod, an R5 with the microphone on top, because it's big and it's just clunky and there's so many spaces and places where I don't wanna carry that around. I don't wanna take that to the grocery store or to the gym or in the car or on a plane Whereas something like the ZV-1, I'm more than happy to take it with me everywhere because it literally fits in my jacket pocket. So that was my thinking process when it came to the idea of making a habit of vlogging. I need to have a camera that I'm more than happy to carry with me at all times and it doesn't feel like a burden having it with me. Even though the ZV-1 is very small, it is a point and shoot camera, it shouldn't be underestimated because this little guy actually packs quite a punch. The ZV-1 films at 4K, 24 frames per second, at 100 megabits per second, which is really good quality. And you can even film 120 frames per second at 1080 and losing a little bit of quality, it can actually film 240, 480, and 960, which is insane if you wanna get some really epic slow motion. As well, the camera has a one inch CMOS sensor, it has a 24 to 70 equivalent focal length, and an aperture of 1.8 to 2.8, which is a really nice aperture and depth of field for the footage. As well, the ZV-1 will film in S-Log, which gives you more dynamic range and more flexibility when it comes to color grading. Now, because this is gonna be more of a vlogging point and shoot, I'm not sure will I film with the S-Log or will I just film with the standard picture profile and not color grade as much. I still have to decide on which one would work better for my workflow. For the LCD screen, no longer does it have the awkward Sony screen that goes up only, it's a flip out screen, which is great because while you're vlogging, you can see exactly how it looks, how the exposure is, what the composition is, which is a must if you wanna do vlogging. And when it comes to autofocus, I haven't had any problems. It's got the eye detection, so you can constantly see whether it's in focus or not. I also love this special feature that when you're recording, there is this red light on all the time, which allows you to know that you are recording because there have been a lot of times where I've been filming on other cameras and I thought I was recording and I wasn't. And that's a huge pain in the butt, especially when you're doing these kind of talking headshots. The ZV-1 also comes with a built-in mic and it has this cool little hot shoe microphone windscreen so you can just attach it there on the hot shoe and just put it there and that's gonna stop all that wind. Now, this is not the best audio sounding, but it's actually really good and usable, which means that I don't need to have this massive shotgun mic, which is always a little bit of a bummer because the shotgun mic almost doubles the size of your camera setup always. So this is very small, nice, and compact, which is ultimately probably one of the main reasons why I chose the Sony ZV-1. It's just small. You could literally put this into your jacket pocket when you're not filming and then just pull it out, shoot a few clips, Maybe even you could put it into your jeans. I'd have to try, let me see. I have very tight jeans on today. But, there we go, voila. It even fit in my jean pocket. So, this is a really small camera which is convenient to take along with you when you're vlogging. All these features in the Sony ZV-1 you can get for a low price of 748 US dollars 
which is pretty dang affordable when you consider it because this has the camera, the lens, and the microphone all in one setup. You don't need to go and buy a camera body, then a lens, then a microphone and put it all together. It's all right here in this one compact setup. Now at this point, some of you guys might be asking the question, well, if you want a small camera, why don't you just film with your iPhone? Something that I've often talked about in my own videos. I've always talked about how useful an iPhone is. Now, some of the downsides of an iPhone, which are not in the Sony ZV-1, is that if you're filming with an iPhone, you can't see what it looks like if you're filming with the back cameras. Obviously, if you're filming with the selfie camera, you do see, but the quality isn't very good in that camera. Whereas, if you want to get the good quality footage, you gotta film with the back cameras, and then I can't see what it looks like. I can't see the exposure. I can't see how it's composed. So that's one downside of the iPhone. Another thing is, is that you can't just put it down on a table and set it down and start filming because mostly it will fall over, whereas with the Sony ZV-1, you can just place it down anywhere you want, really, and it's gonna stay there sturdily and you're gonna get the shot that you need. I think the only concern that I have with the ZV-1 is whether or not it's wide enough, especially if you're using the active stabilization. Let's go outside and let me show you the difference between no stabilization with lens stabilization only and then with the active stabilization because there's a different crop and different smoothness to every single setting. Before we head out into the freezing cold and do some stabilization tests just to show how wide the ZV-1 is, I wanna give a quick shout out to this episode's sponsor and that's Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is actually gonna be a long-term partner of this channel this year, which is really awesome because essentially our partnership enables me to create great content for you guys to enjoy. So without Epidemic Sound, really everything that I do on a daily basis wouldn't be possible. If you haven't yet checked out Epidemic Sound, they are the place to find music and sound effects for your videos. They have a catalog of over 30,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects. So you aren't gonna run out of amazing songs to use on your projects. So if you want, you can check them out by clicking the link in my description and you'll get a one month free trial for the personal plan or the commercial plan. So you can just check them out, no risks involved, see if you enjoy it, which I'm quite confident you will enjoy, and then you can just enjoy Epidemic Sounds services. So feel free to pause the video right now, go click the link in my description if you haven't yet signed up for Epidemic Sound, because you're gonna regret it if you don't. All right, let's go outside now and do those tests. So this is me just holding out the camera. Right now I have no stabilization on, and it's pretty wide, but I'm assuming that the footage is gonna look quite shaky. Now let me turn on the lens stabilization. Okay, now I have the lens stabilization on, and in my opinion, at least it didn't look like it cropped in when I put the lens stabilization on, but it's gonna probably get some of those micro jitters away. But if I really want it smooth, then I can turn on the active mode. Let me turn it on and show you how smooth it is then. And now I have the active mode. So this is lens stabilization and active stabilization combined together, which makes it really smooth. There's no shakes anymore, but as you can tell, it cropped in and now it's kind of just like a floating head. Maybe if I have a tripod or some small little Manfrotto tripod, I could get it even farther out, but then that kind of defeats the purpose of having a small compact setup. So this is maybe the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about that do I just go with the lens stabilization, have a little bit shakier but wider, or do I go with the active track which is a lot smoother, but then it's a lot tighter and scaled in. So I don't know, you guys tell me. Tell me how the footage looks. Do you mind the shakes of just lens stabilization or do you prefer this active track look? You guys tell me. Just finished checking out the footage from the ZV-1 when it comes to stabilization and crop. With no stabilization, way too shaky, so that is not usable. When you use just the lens stabilizer, it's better, but I still like that more smoother look. So I actually did like the look of the active track the most, but it is a little bit too tight, so maybe if I have you know this Manfrotto tripod, I can put it out that extra 10 centimeters to make it wild enough. But 
ultimately, it's up to you guys. You guys are the audience, so tell me, does the shake with just the lens stabilization bother you? If not, I'll just use that, but if you do prefer the active track and that smooth stabilization, then we're just gonna have to figure out how to use the ZV-1 and make it work for the everyday vlogging. I guess the good part is, is that you don't always have to vlog and talk, whereas you can just put the camera down somewhere and just be a little bit farther away from the camera. So that might be a good solution when it comes to filming with the Sony ZV-1. All right, guys, I think this is the beginning of my Sony journey. I'm gonna be shooting on the Sony ZV-1, starting to vlog with this guy, and I really hope that it's gonna enable me to incorporate more of my day life into this channel because I would like to just show more of my life. I don't wanna just be stuck at the studio all the time, but I also don't wanna carry on this big setup that I got in my hand right now. It's just too much with the Gorillapod microphone and the camera, so I think the Sony ZV-1 is gonna be the answer to my problems. All right guys, that's it for this episode. Once again, make sure to hit that link in the description to sign up for Epidemic Sound. Support me by helping yourself to getting a one month free trial. All right, have a fantastic day. Yeah.